All right now, welcome to the Sincere and Prince Show. This is your girl, Sincere. And this is your boy, Prince. So today we're getting straight into Stranger Things and we're talking about how it correlates with the string theory. And uh, basically, before we even go into that, we wanted to say this show is awesome. It's like a, a you know a Steven Spielberg movie that he hasn't done in a while, and but it transformed into a series and it's been and it's brilliant. You know, now going back to the string theory, it's dope that the main character is is named Eleven, and that basically goes into the the string theory that they said is actually Eleven and not Ten. Okay, yes, absolutely. Yeah, Stranger thing number one. I will say this. I would like to touch on and piggyback off what she said is that it was a dope show i was not expecting it to be as good as it turned out to be i love the instrumentation love the 80s feel and yes it does look like a steven spielberg movie that he forgot <laughs> i'm sorry because he has been holding a lot of l's across the board lately and he's been getting angry about it too i'm like yes he's very grumpy about it yes he's becoming the cantankerous old man yeah and you know what to chalk it up he has the expertise and the finesse. He should just go ahead and give in to the Matrix and do a superhero film. Yeah, he, it would be awesome to see us, uh, you know, Spielberg do a take on that. Right. Uh, I think it would actually be a good mix if he if he stopped being so, uh, I guess, such a hater. Yeah, such a hater. You know. <laughs> well, I mean, think about it. Uh, what ET? E.T. E. was like a little hero. Well, he did appear up in, you know, Star Wars, like, you know, with a little E.T. alien. Let's not talk about that. Jedi's. No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying Steven Spielberg needs to get back on ball because Stranger Things and series. Of the third kind. Yeah, Stranger Things was definitely kind of playing off that energy a little bit. But yes, going back into the string theory, we're just going to touch on it here. Yes, the character's name, the main character's name is Ellie or Eleven, and, and people may not be familiar, or if you are, Eleven is a master number, which if you are to see it supposedly everywhere, it's that it's a number or a a guide number, that is, and it's a gate. So if you look at Ellie, her character, she was a guide into the other world, the other realm, and that's what the number, for the most part, is supposed to be a gateway to spiritual enlightenment. Whereas with Eleven's situation, although she was becoming spiritually enlightened in the sense of reclaiming her childhood, uh, other entities were coming in through that gateway that she accidentally kicked off. Yeah. And it, yeah, so it also ties into the whole uh, Eleven dim dimensions. And when it was talking about the string theory, where there could be other dimensions right in front of you. But because your physicality is tied to this particular dimension, you can't see it. The cool thing about Eleven is because of her powers, she was actually was able to touch and create a tear within that. So now people who on average wouldn't be able to see that dimension were now able to and also interact with it. And, and that includes the the creature as well. And then that's why it, it was very clever because Stranger Things actually touched on a lot of scientific theories that uh, some people might not have known about. And, the, and, you know, the strength theory is definitely one of them. You know, even with the whole upside down that they created with the dimension that basically the dimension that Eleven touched, tapped into, was basically the reverse of the dimension that everybody else was living on, I think, with the one, two, and three. Because in the strength theory was it is it three strings that we are able to okay what to was access yeah what was happening it was showing up as five it was five and then it turned out really what was taking place was a reflection so it was really one what was taking place though uh, with 11 is that she did tap into an alternative dimension now yes. this is one alternative dimension which scientists uh, for the most part have concluded there are 11 unaccounted for dimensions and it kind of touched on actually it touched on a lot of met metaphysical it's weird if you think about it the metaphysical new age and then uh of that type of science particularly they all eventually come to one understanding quantum physics yeah quantum physics as well and all quantum physics is doing actually if you study history whether or not with the dogon tribe and other uh groups out of india and parts of other parts of asia 
Uh, quantum physics, in a sense, is reaffirming what they have stated in the past. Because in these ancient texts and books, they talked about alternative dimensions. And so, uh, in a sense, it's interesting how day to day, you know, people call other folks crazy that believe, you know, in these alternative dimensions. Yet, if you look at most of our science fiction, most of our religion, it deals heavily within that. Going back to what you said about the reflection, that's very important when you said basically that the, the dimension they tapped into was a reflection of where, where, where they already was. In the string theory, uh, prior to them finding out they were 11, they had uh, in, internal fighting because they were five string theories. I can't, I'm forgetting the, the scientists right now, people who are in the science world, if they come here, they're going to kill us. But he was the one who figured it out and said that the reason why your guys are fighting, you're not realizing that those are five reflections. Yeah. That instead is not five separate theories, it's actually five reflections. Yes. And you and now going back to Stranger Things, now what you were talking about with the dimension she tapped into, she actually tapped into, like you said, a reflection of the dimension that they were already on. Yeah. Or in. Yeah, the the, the guy that ended up uh, concluding that there was one, it was it was a theory he came up called the M theory. And so Ellie, what she was able to do, 11, she was able to, uh, she ignited a tear, uh, which was a rip. Okay. And this is reflective of a uh, parts of the string theory uh, aspect of it is that the, there are rips in dimensions that allow people uh, to either, not necessarily yet, but supposedly is to allow people to travel into these alternative dimensions or allow other entities to come into our dimension, whether we understand it or not. So, um, you know, the show was very clever. And I think, to be honest with you, unless some other people may have taken their time, I think for the most part, a lot of things went over people's heads because for what I've seen, the reaction to Stranger Theme is stranger thing excuse me is that people are just more tied up in the aspect of the the 80s nostalgia feel uh the, which was the, yeah they were yeah, really which, i have to say yeah, this they, is the first time in a long time that they've done that and it pulled it off very well yeah very well that is and you know just the instrumentation the actors and the actresses of the show so i mean there was a deeper level to the show that uh, for the most part went over a lot of people's heads and even if you look at the dimension that she uh touched on uh, it was unfortunate but it was it was a dimension that was allowed to uh, decay in a sense if you think about it and even the fact that they stated when she was trying to explain to the family members that what you are doing right now you're skating on top of the other dimension which is underground and you know within our culture underground is synonymous with death Mm. It can be synonymous mm -hmm. with death or life, given that, you know, if it's a tree coming or coming out of the roots of the ground and everything, or if it's a, a plant. Depending but, on the culture and yeah, the mythology, yeah. Yeah, but in this situation, the fact that, you know, she pointed, they, they didn't do it just where, like, the dimension was on the other side of a wall or a mirror. No, she specifically stated that it was underground. And if you know if they, you know, when they went to that other dimension, you know, and it was underground in a sense, uh, a mirror... Everything within that dimension was decayed. It was. It was. And to be honest with you, Sincere and I, we thought at least Barbara was going to make it back a little bit. There was a little bit of hope for Barbara because we weren't sure necessarily what the creatures were doing with these people. Yeah, well, we, I wasn't sure. We wasn't sure of the, if, if the creature was collecting people, mm -hmm. collecting children, or or killing people. But we, we definitely got our answer when, when, um, when we saw... What took the place? Was, yes, yeah. yes. Also, uh, another thing that they played off of, which a lot of these uh, science fiction films and even ancient mythologies played off of, was the innocence of children, and that in a sense, these monsters of the world uh, were not able to get around the innocence of a child. Remember when Will disappeared? Now, Will disappeared. The creature was hovering around him, but it never necessarily like it just never really killed him you know because if you think about it like barbara it was instant it was immediate because uh, she had grown into adulthood and she was no longer a child well, for will it was going to harvest will mm -hmm. and an uh, interesting thing going back to what you said about you know is the the other reflection that dimension represented death and decay 
you know, well, when they got in contact with him, you know, they asked him, well, where, where are you at? How, where is this place? And he said, it's, it's, it's just like home, but it's cold and it's dark. Mm-hmm. And, and that basically was the clue right there, you know, for, for the relatives that it was basically a reflection of their plane, but in a more decaying manner. Right. It flipped. Yeah. yeah. And, and one of the great things about it is that, uh, with these shows such as Stranger Things that do tie in or tap into alternative dimensions, it gives you an opportunity if you are, you know, just open to the idea, to the possibility that maybe what you're seeing is not all that is there. And also when we go into the time aspect, you know, even though Will was was dying slowly, I think time also in that other dimension was different. Slow down. Because it was slowed down because he wouldn't have survived without eating and, and and without eating anything or drinking water actually for that long of a period. So in the other dimension, time was slower. Mm. Yeah, and I thought one of the scenes I thought was pretty fascinating was when uh Will's older brother, uh, when him and his girl at the time were battling the creature that actually tapped into their dimension, and they end up injuring the creature and it disappeared. But his mother was on the other side. And when they saw the lights going off, the other, the boy and the girl said, oh, it's back. And then he said, no, it's something else. So it kind of ties into, you know how you say you feel something that is there, but you can't quite can't understand. It. Yeah, you yeah. can't explain it, but you can feel if it has any sort of nefarious motives or if it's, uh, you know, innocent. And he felt at that time the energy was innocent. And this is something that, you know, a lot of scientists right now are still looking at. They're investigating, you know, especially with the, the string theory. And, you know, I know some people are, are made fun of when they feel something supernatural or something they feel in their spirit is is lurking. And some people want to make fun of that. But there's a possibility that vibrations that at a certain particular time people can feel a certain vibration that could possibly be from another dimension possibly well we feel it we feel it even the people that call themselves making fun of people that are comfortable enough to admit they're feeling it they feel it too now it depends on your level of concentration and how open you are to receiving this energy frequency wave spirit whatever you want to call it something is vibrating and resonating um it's kind of like you know even tying into music like the Savelgio tones these are different tones that for the most part they can activate different levels as far as your chakra energy you know so i mean just saying that is is something that has been you know taken into account for and proven throughout history and even scientists dealing with quantum physics and other aspects of science they've taken interest into this type of uh, information and media so currently like right now They're trying to figure out how can you go to the next level. Like right now you get vibrations, you get a feeling, you get these things. But how can you actually create a tear to actually go into another dimension or for something else that's in another dimension to come on into ours? And then, you know, they talked about also going back into what we were saying before. The reason why Will and the rest of them couldn't see that dimension before is because it wasn't physically possible. Uh, L11, she was the one that created that tier for them to interact. So it's an interesting thing that, um, right now because they said something could even, another dimension can literally be in front of our faces, but the other thing that's within that di- other dimension cannot interact with us physically and we cannot interact with it physically. Well, you have to think about it like this. You, you have to accept it as a truth because think about this. Birds can see certain types of birds can see ultraviolet rays. Absolutely. We can't mm-hmm. because we can't without us knowing we would have assumed that they didn't exist. It's just like pets, dogs, cats. They see something or they're able to tap into that dimension or that level of that dimension that some of us or a lot of us are not able to. And one thing uh, that was interesting about 11, if you get a chance, you should check out. Uh, independent private studies for so-called empaths and people that are able to get into uh, cycle projection, that is, as well. You'd be surprised. Um, certain agencies, 
nothing conspiratorial here. This is, I mean, this is information. It's all out there on the internet. All you have to do is just look it up. They actually spent money into uh, looking into the idea of developing people that are extremely sensitive. That, that's all empaths are. They're just sensitive people. It doesn't mean you're necessarily Professor Xavier. If you look at 11, 11 was very sensitive. It's very sensitive to a lot of things. Even when uh, Lucas started yelling at her, she like she froze. She got upset, you know, or she was able to feel the energy uh, of was, certain she boys. She yeah. noted what he was putting onto her. But, yeah. But in a, uh, it was amplified. Right. And, and that's another thing, too. Eleven, she was an amplifier as well. She was like a walking antenna. So she was she was an empath. She was able to take energy and, and reproject it. So if you look at how they had her secluded off from everyone and everything else that could affect her, her thinking, her ability to feel things. And what they had her to do was just develop, develop, On the develop technical side. Yeah. Over time. So. Uh, you know, the show was very clever, especially when they touched on string theory, especially when they touched on, um, you know, these alternative dimensions, uh, which is something that you know, for the most part, a lot of scientists are saying it is true. Absolutely. And let's just also just go into the, the you know, the retro wave music and the style. Uh, going back to it, I, I was really impressed because. Uh, in modern times, uh, you know, certain period pieces it just doesn't seem authentic anymore. And I would say this was the first even series in a long time that I felt like I really was in the 80s, you know. Well, interesting enough, the show was very clever. Think about this. Uh, Eleven's character, the focal point, her strongest point was her mind, her ability Absolutely. to manipulate matter. Okay. What they were doing with a lot of the, 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 the sonic pieces, the songs and instrumentation, they were playing a lot of airy, ambient and wave brainwave pattern music. So it was also kind of playing off, you know, the different brainwaves that people have. You have alpha, beta, theta, delta. Uh, so, you know, make no mistake, you know, like if you're listening to a soundtrack while you're watching a movie, a lot of times what you're feeling for that particular picture has a lot to do with the soundtrack. I also want to say that it kind of had a feel of a care to it. You yes. Know, when she was in the facility, uh, when also even this, the, you know, her look, it really did remind me of a Kara and, and even some of the artwork or the, the, the typography. Mm. I, I really was loving it. It, it. Every time I watched it and every time I, I saw L, you know, 11, I, I always thought, Sometimes Akira will pop into my into my mind, and also even even uh, the scenes with the kids with them riding on their bike. You know, even though I know in Akira they they were had their motorcycles, it still kind of had that Akira f feel to it. Well, it did. Now that I think about it, and, and you brought that up, Akira because he was put a, I mean he was put into a laboratory. Yes, and he was studied and. He, he got a little bit out of control with it. Whereas Eleven, she was I, the opposite. She, yeah, she was. Yeah, she was the opposite. And also, another thing, uh, female or women uh, supposedly uh, make better empaths. So it was interesting they chose a little girl. Well, it's the same thing that they did with the Tom Cruise movie. Um, what was the movie with Tom Cruise where they were able to Minority Report? Minority Report. Yeah, yeah they had the, the female. She was the strongest. And the two uh, to two males assisted her, but she was the strongest of the three. Uh, you kind of see this uh, um, basically being retold a lot in a lot of science fiction, even in history movies in history that you know for that particular thing that the the female gender is better at. Because even how they flipped it with Akira with the guy, he couldn't control it, and, and eventually, you know, he kills almost everyone. But with with Eleven, especially the relationship she had with other human beings positive ones was enough for her to go and, and relax actually and say that has serenity with her i think it has to do with the biological makeup of, of women in the sense that eventually for the most part the greatest aspiration is to grow into motherhood so you have to have like a level a complete different level of empathy when it comes to birthing a child or nurturing a life force within you 
So I think early on, Eleven was able to tap into it. Also, another thing about women empaths, uh, if you get a chance, you know, do some research on certain pharaohs and even Greek emperors. Uh, a lot of them would not take a woman as their wife unless she had the ability to see without time. So, you know, women that were able to at least give some sort of forewarning uh, or even if they master what is called, quote unquote, a woman's intuition just on a different level. You know, a lot of these guys that had a lot to lose, they would not take on you know, a lady if she didn't have that capability. So, I mean, it, it's it's something looking at 11. It, it's something and it, it's something that society needs to kind of pay attention a little bit more to. Uh, unfortunately, Western culture is something we kind of overlook, whereas other societies where people deem them not as, quote unquote, civilized, they do understand the role of, of women and, and their wisdom in that sense. To a degree, in some places, even some places in the Eastern world has also, actually, I would say a good amount have lost it as well. Yes, but you they still have, have some. <laughs> yes, they you have. still have some, though, that, like you said, still understand that. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the show is, is definitely, um, it was powerful. And one thing I, I do like is that, uh, you know, for the most part, even though she was advanced in, in this other area, especially being able to touch on different dimensions, which also, if you paid attention, she had not quite mastered yet. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was still interesting to see her reclaim her childhood, though. Yeah, and I also love the, the characters that assisted her with that journey. You know, and she assisted them. When you look at um, Lucas, when you look at, um, I'm forgetting the other two boys' names now. Oh, Snagglepuss and uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They they were cool cats. They were cool, but it it, it was like um, she found she found people that she felt cared for her. Yes, yes, because the cat with the white hair did not. No, he did not, and they lost something too. They they lost their innocence. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, for the most part, think about this. I thought, I, to be honest with you, I thought they was able to maintain it, and it no. actually got better because of when you the excitement of the journey with I, I don't. Who like, are we talking about? Are you talking about the 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 almost CIA type operative cat with the white hair? Oh no! Yeah, that's who I was talking about. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're talking about the boys. No, no, okay, okay, go no, ahead. no. I was, I was talking about him. It was interesting because it, it was a duality between Eleven's character and his character. Eleven was sensitive to everything. He was not. Mm -hmm. He was completely insensitive to every. Even when Will's mother was crying to him, saying, "My son, my son," and he just sat there and looked like he didn't care. She said, like, "I could care less." Mm -hmm. You know, but yeah, that's who I was talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I agree with you. I was just saying. Yeah, I was gonna say, I was I was like, you going to disagree with me on this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but definitely, definitely. So, uh, did you have any final thoughts? No, no, I just, I love the, the, the science that was with Stranger Things. You know, I, I really enjoyed it. You know, a lot, they implemented a lot of the strength there. I mean, damn near the whole thing, if you be honest, and they added their science fiction to it. Yes, yeah, since they act, they added their flip, kind of you know similar to what like Stargate had touched on as mm -hmm. well. So you know, a lot of science fiction films have dealt with this, but I think as of today, so far from what I've seen in this particular time, Stranger Things definitely uh, implemented it well within the show, and I'm I'm looking forward to season two. Absolutely. All right, now this is your boy Prince, and this is your girl Sincere. We are out. Thank you.
Thank you.